goals. What's the purpose? Why are they there? I mean, yeah, I know. You talk to my husband and you, and I said to him, well, why did you come to Pilates? And he openly says he had a pain in the neck and he came to fix that. But he also was single at the time and he went, oh, a lot of women do Pilates. Maybe I'll meet somebody there. <laughs> he met the instructor, the owner of the business. Oops. Oh, well. <laughs> but, you know, we all have our goals. But that part of pain in the neck is fixed. But he's got a different one and it's okay. He's happy with it apparently, after all of these years. But everyone comes with their goals. Not everybody wants to run a marathon. Not everybody wants to be a size eight or a size four or whatever. I don't understand. Skinny, okay? Some people just want to be pain-free. And this is your job as a teacher to actually understand what the person's goal is because that's going to motivate them to come in week after week after week. Because let's face it, they have many options on what exercises they can do. What you have to find is the reason why they're choosing you and committing not only to you, but committing to their own health to make the changes to get to achieve their goal. They're going to stop if they don't feel like they're making progress And let's face it, they should. So let's find their goal and those goals may change. One of my favorite clients started with me. She had been to everyone. She had tried everything. And in the first session, I looked at her and I said, well, I think this is happening in your body. She goes, I just, she was a doctor. And she said, I just want to be pain free. So we came to an understanding that at first, All she was going to do was a 15 minute class. She was fine with that. And then over time, we worked to a 30 minute class. Now she comes in once a week for a full hour class and she's happy and she's going, she's now doing senior ballet and she's doing all sorts of things, happy as. Now and again, she has pain, but over the years, we slowly progressed. And in that process, we did a couple of things. We understood the concept of endurance. And we understood that with endurance, we had to give her time and process it to allow her to build endurance. You don't run a marathon in a day. So if we had to do 15 minutes, we did 15 minutes. Some clients may not actually want to do that. They may go, no, I want to do an hour. So you, in your programming, need to think, well, how do I factor in tea breaks for these people? Fatigue breaks. Because if they work all the way through, they're going to be more fatigued and actually end up in bed for a month. You'll see this with clients with rheumatoid arthritis. You'll see clients with this with chronic pain syndromes. You have to find ways to allow them to do a certain amount of exercise, to build their endurance, to build their strength, but then allow them breaks. So I have all sorts of what I call tea break exercises. We do exercises like work on our hands. We do little hand exercises, we do little feet exercises where they're still doing something to help them but they're not pushing their body beyond their tolerance. Tolerance is actually what you can do before you hit pain. And for a lot of people, that's a really hard thing to understand. A lot of people think if it's not hurting, it's not working. Well, that might work when you're 20 and we're looking at abs, gorgeous six packs. I can tell you, if you are in your 50s and you have chronic joint pain or chronic 
tendinopathies. Or if you've got an autoimmune condition, if it's hurting, it's hurting. And if it's still hurting 24 hours later, you have done tissue damage. And that tissue damage may not heal. So we come back to a really important thing. We listen to our clients when they say, this is good pain or this is bad pain. We also may have to teach our clients awareness of what is good pain and what is bad pain. Some people just don't know that they're doing damage or they have become so switched off to their body. They have been in pain for so long. You use the word, how does that feel? And they look at you and go, what? They're numb. They have developed a strategy. I'm constantly fatigued. I'm constantly in pain. I can't process this all the time. I'm going to say it's okay. It's not okay. But part of your programming is how do you create awareness? Teach, show them something, get them to become aware of the consequences on their body. I will often get them to do an exercise at the beginning of the session and at the end of the session, but I also will work with a person and introduce a concept. A new concept, I'll get them to walk around. I'll say, just walk around, see how that feels. Just observe it. The process observing is part of them building their understanding of it, but it also allows you over time to start to build an idea of how a program works. How do I work with a client who has dropped foot? Because I've observed that when I do these exercises with a person, I get this result. So I know that when I build my programming in the future, I can start to make sure I can add these exercises in confidently. Yes, I can do all the courses in the world, preferably with me, but if I don't take that information and slowly review it as I program, I will never become a truly good teacher because I'm not integrating the knowledge and applying it to my client. So remember, tolerance is about listening to what the person is doing, what they can do, and adjusting to it. Finally, this thing's called muscular strength. Not everybody wants to lift a tire above their head and carry it for a car park. I would be really happy if I could just carry my granddaughter without having shoulder pain. I would be really happy if I can run at the Christmas sales, hopefully this year there will be, to get what I want and not be injured by somebody jostling me. That is the strength I want. I want to be able to work for eight hours a day teaching without having a sore back or sore hips. That's the strength I want and that's the strength I need on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, comes back to my goals. So you as a teacher, need to find ways to build that muscular strength.